All right, this morning we're going to talk about a few questions that have no answers. And we are also going to talk about the most important question of all. Our text is Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. And it reads like this. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. Now, there are many things in life for which we will never find an answer. No matter how hard we try and uh, no matter how much research we do, no matter how much we investigate, there are just certain questions about life that there are no answer for until we meet with our Savior and receive that direct revelation from him on certain topics. And I've listed a few things here for our consideration. And one of those uh, being, how deep is the bottomless pit? Have you ever wondered that? How deep is the bottomless pit? Well, the bottomless pit is bottomless, right? So can you even attempt to measure the depth of something that is bottomless? Another question that might cross our minds is, how wide is our universe? Now, the scientists have given us an, what they believe to be an estimate of, of um, our particular universe. But what I, was, what I meant to say here is how wide are all the universes? If you put all the universes, consider all the universes together, like we live in the Milky Way universe, but really, even a scientific estimate from our greatest scientists, if, you know, so many trillion light years across, how accurate could that possibly be? Nobody has ever taken a tape measure into space and taped it off and figured out exactly how wide our universe is much less all the universes put together. Is there a stopping point out there somewhere? Is, are we living in a sphere of some kind and we would reach an end point? It's something we'll never know in this lifetime. Another question we often ask ourselves from childhood is, how broad is space? How deep and how broad is space. When you look up into the night sky and you look at the stars and you wonder how far is that star? You wonder how far away is the moon? You wonder how far away is that planet? But the big question is just how big is space? How much space is in space? That's a question for which we will never, ever have an answer in this lifetime. And then, one of the greatest questions that we ask ourselves in our lives, when we begin to think about eternity, everlasting life, how long is eternity? How long is eternity? You could say forever and ever 
and ever and ever and just keep adding evers. But there's no way for the human mind to comprehend things that are eternal. God is an eternal being. He has always been and he will always be. Now, he created us to be everlasting beings. We have a starting point in time and space, but we never have an ending. Though our bodies die, our souls go on forever and ever and ever and ever. How long is that? Longer than my mind can ever imagine. So these are just some of the, the questions that we, we think about in life, and there are many, many, many more. The, these are just some examples. But when we read our text, the main question that was asked in Hebrews 2, 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? God offers us salvation through Jesus Christ. And it comes by His grace through faith. And not even our own faith. It's God. God gives us the faith to be able to believe it in the first place. But for those of us who reject Jesus Christ, for those of us who refuse to accept God's greatest gift, the gift of salvation, how shall they escape? How shall they escape? Well, what does that mean? How shall they escape? What shall they, uh, what shall they escape? This prompts other questions. Right? What do they escape from? What do they escape to? So that brings us to this question. What is salvation? Some people think that salvation is that single act of repentance. When you go up to the altar and you repent of all your sins, and you ask Jesus Christ into your life. But the truth is, salvation is not a one-time event. It's a process that will continue through past this life that we're living and on into eternity forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But what we can say definitively, even though some may argue about Salvation being a one-time event or a process or we can say for sure salvation is deliverance from God's penalty for sin. In the book of Romans it tells us that there is a penalty for sin. It says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. The penalty for sin is death. And that doesn't mean that your body just dies. That means eternally separated from God. Death means separation. To be eternally separated from God. And remember, one of our great questions is, how long is eternity? Forever and ever and ever and ever. Sin is deliverance from the judgment of God against all the things we have ever done against God. At one time, before you received Jesus Christ as your Savior, hell and judgment was our destination. Before we received Jesus Christ as our Savior, hell and death is our destination, without a doubt. The Bible says that those who have 
uh, rejected Jesus Christ, and I'm paraphrasing here, it's as if they are dead already in trespasses and in sins. It's as if they are dead already. It's as if they have already been judged and ju the judgment of God means that their destination is going to be hell. I'll talk about hell in a, a little more in a couple minutes. So, salvation is deliverance from the judgment of God and the ultimate place that we don't want to end up. And that is hell. Next, every decision that you made before you were a Christian, before you received Jesus Christ as, as your Savior, before you received salvation, led you closer to your destruction. Every decision that we make when we're not a Christian, always leads us closer to our own destruction. Next, now, consider this. Now that you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have that promise of salvation. Every heartbeat that you have leads you closer to God's promised land. Some people call it heaven. Some people say it's the new Jerusalem. What we know it to be is a place of paradise where we shall live with Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever, all eternity. So, those of us who have salvation, every time your heart beats, it's a reminder that you are closer and closer to the promises that salvation has given to you. Salvation is deliverance. It's deliverance from the power of sin. The power of sin in this world is great. The power of sin is overwhelming. The power of sin will take even the best of us, the most cheerful of us, the most the, the strongest of us, the most intellectual of us, and turn us into mush. Because sin is based on our personal and selfish and evil lusts. Those things that we desire for that God says we should not be a part of. That we should not have part in. So, we were once slaves to that selfishness and to those evil lusts that caused us to do all the things that are against God's will. And it starts early in life, doesn't it? It doesn't start as a direct attack against God. It starts when we're kids. It starts by challenging the authority of our parents. Because in the structure of family that God put together, we know that the, the man of the house, the husband, he represents, he is the representative of God in the family. The wife is the representative of Christ. The children are representative of the church. And early in childhood, we begin to challenge the authority of the one we believe to be in charge. And for many of us, that challenge goes beyond when we grow up and we move out of the house and we start a life of our own. Now we move that challenge away from our parents 
and we move it directly to God and Jesus Christ and uh, and the church. Even if we are members of the church, even if we are a part of the church, a part of the body of Jesus Christ, we still have those selfish, evil desires. But salvation delivers us from them. The salvation that God provides for us gives us the power to overcome. We were once slaves to selfishness and evil lust, but now we are free to overcome. All sin. Consider that, because most people believe that we are, we are not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm just forgiven. But the Bible tells us that we are to be much more than that. We are to, if we never accomplish it for real, at least we stand for the righteousness that is Jesus Christ. As long as we have faith in God, then God imparts to us Righteousness. And he assumes we are righteous even though we have not quite attained it yet. So now we are free to overcome all the sin that is in our lives. Our own sin and the sin of other people that affects us in so many different ways. And we overcome this through the power of God's grace. God's grace is the free gift of God that gives us the power to overcome all sin. And it happens through faith. You have to believe without a shadow of a doubt in order for it to come to pass. But once you believe without a shadow of doubt, you put away the fears, you put away the worry, you put away the stress, you begin to overcome every sin. Also talking about deliverance, salvation is deliverance from the presence of sin. No matter who you are, there is sin in your life. It may not be yours, it may be somebody else, but it affects you. We are surrounded by the brutality of sin. Sin is brutal. Sin has no mercy. Sin takes no prisoners. And we are surrounded by the brutality. Of the sin that hurts us the most is the sins of those that we love the best. And even though we're surrounded by it, and even though we complain about it, we still choose it, we revel in it, and we wallow in it. We complain about sin. We complain about all the wrong that other people are doing. We complain about all the wrong in our government. We complain about all the wrong uh, in the world. We complain about the wrong among the gangs and among the druggies and We complain about the wrong in our own family. All the bad things that people do to each other. We complain about it, but we always seem to become part of it. We just naturally, as human beings, we choose it. And because we're human, we revel in it and we wallow in it. Like pigs wallow in mud. People wallow in sin. If you do not have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you have not received salvation, you are a wallower. You wallow in the mud of all that is against God's will. And the next point, we all need salvation because we have all sinned. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
There is not one person who is righteous enough to stand before God and God be able to say, Come ye into my kingdom. Not one of us can deserve that. It is only because Jesus Christ was able to live a life without sin. Jesus Christ died on the cross as a sacrifice. And his shed blood covers our sin. And that covering pays the price, pays the penalty. Remember what the penalty was? Death. Eternal separation. Jesus paid the price for our sin with his death on the cross. And then he rose again from the dead to justify us in the eyes of God. So what's so great about salvation? Our next question. What's so great about salvation is the price that was paid for our freedom. The price that Jesus Christ paid for our freedom. He was willing to give his life in exchange for ours. He laid down his life so that we may have eternal life. What's so great about salvation? It's all conclusive. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not willing that anyone should go to a place called hell. He wants everyone to come to him and accept his gift of salvation. What's so great about salvation? The simplicity of the message. All you have to do is, by faith, believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Son of God. The promise. And proclaim that with your mouth. And you will be saved. That's all the Bible says we have to do. Have total faith in Jesus Christ. And then proclaim that faith. To the people around us. And we will be saved. What's so great about salvation the complete change that takes place in our life. That old person that we used to be that always rebelled against authority and rebelled against everything that everybody told us was bad, we went ahead and did it anyway to our own hurt and our own destruction. There's a complete change that takes place in life once you receive Jesus Christ as Savior. And everything that used to be becomes new. What's so great about salvation? Being here this morning and having fellowship with you all. Fellowship with other believers. The fellowship that we have as children of God, being a part of the body of Christ is such a precious fellowship. It is a fellowship that often can be closer than family because it's not based on a blood tie. It's based on what ties us together in God's kingdom, and that is What's so great about salvation? The faithfulness of our Savior Jesus Christ. Every promise that he ever made to us will always come to pass. There is not a shadow of doubt that every promise Jesus ever made us will come to pass. What's so great about salvation? Salvation has a single permanence. It is the only permanent thing in the world in a world full of constant change. Everything in life is always changing. Except our God. 
our God in the person of Jesus Christ who obtained our salvation and the Holy Spirit that lives within us that helps us to live that salvation day by day and moment by moment. From what do we escape? Remember it said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation that God is offering to us? From what do we escape? Uh, we escape all of that sin that used to keep us in slavery and in bondage. And you got to remember these two things. There is no other source of escape. If you want to escape your sins, get rid of your bad habits, uh, no longer do bad things, um, no longer feel guilt and shame. There is no other way for you to get rid of all that sin except by receiving Jesus Christ as Savior. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to the Father except through me. And that caused me to, to think about the fact that, you know, of all the ways that God could have come up with, to offer us eternal life, to offer us salvation. This is what he imagined. That he himself would come to earth as a human being. Live his life as a human being. So he could suffer in every way like we do. Be tempted in every way like we are and yet remain without sin so that he could be the perfect sacrifice and give us that eternal salvation. You know, life is full of tragedies, and the greatest tragedies are missed opportunities. You think about the career you could have chose for life. You know, there are a lot of people that reach a certain age and are disappointed with the career choice they made for their life, the education that they received, the properties that they could have purchased, and most importantly, the judgment for those who neglect to escape. Uh, escape. The judgment that comes to those who neglect this great salvation. This way of escape that God has provided for each and every one of us on the planet. What if we accept salvation? Accepting salvation provides escape from the guilt of your past, the fear of your future. It provides us an escape from hell, which being interpreted in the Bible is sometimes interpreted Sheol, which means the grave. Sometimes Gehenna, which is the garbage dump that's constantly burning with all the trash and refuse outside the city of Jerusalem. Jesus described hell as being cast into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So whatever your interpretation of what hell actually is, it's not a place you would ever want to be. Accepting salvation provides us escape from whatever you think hell is. Even the hell that's here on earth. If we accept salvation, it gives us escape from the lake of fire that's been prepared for the devil and his angels. It gives us escape from the great tribulation. Jesus promised that we would not have to go through the great tribulation. It provides us escape from the final war that's going to take place on earth. The final world war where the Bible says that everybody on the planet would, would virtually be annihilated except Jesus Christ steps in at that moment and takes over. But most of all, 
if we accept salvation, we escape the great white throne judgment. Everyone, no matter who they are, if they do not receive Jesus Christ as Savior, will have to stand before God and be judged. Why? Because God is a just God. Because God is a righteous God. And he is going to judge between those who did and those who didn't. Those who received him and those who rejected him. Finally, salvation is the great escape. When we talk about questions that we do not have answers for, there are still many, even when we talk about salvation, which is a sure thing. There are still many questions that we don't have answers for. But what we know for sure about salvation is that it provides us an escape from sin and self. And it provides us an escape to Jesus Christ. What more do we need to know about life? What more do we need to know about unanswerable questions? What more do we need to know about that one most stable thing in life? In a changing world, there is one constant. Either you accept or you reject Jesus Christ. And how will you escape if you neglect such a great salvation? Let's stand again.